This is a cheap but fairly impressive little disco strobe type, well disco strobe, it's got a strobing function but it's a laser, it's the one with the sort of like the filters in front that scatter the beams all over the place and it's got two lasers in it, a green laser, DPSS laser, diode pump solid state and it's got the traditional red sort of gallium arsenide type laser, very simple and uh, it's got various functions, it's got the you can have it in the sound activated mode, which is annoying because it just means that it just any time it hears a thump, it flashes, which is quite annoying. Um, you can have it in strobo mode, which is equally as annoying, and it lets you vary the speed at which it strobes, which is yeah, not so keen that. And it's got off, but that's not terribly exciting. The motor can be varied from quite fast to very slow. Quite, uh, quite impressively slow actually. So let's uh, take a look inside this. So this is a box that came in and I could link to the eBay seller but it was uh, one of the sort of the... Uh, I'll put a link anyway but it's one of the UK warehouses for a Chinese seller. You can tell that because it's not got a hugely inflated price, it's more the sort of Chinesey type price uh, with a slight uh, markup to cover the sort of postage and, and storage. But anyway, uh, it's a very common type. Uh, this one cost about £10, I think, or something like that. Um, and it powers from a 5 volt supply with this little jack connector and uh, this little 5 volt 1 amp power supply. So let's pop that in this and see what's inside. Here are the controls. Uh, it's got the three position switch um, off, normal and uh, the strobing. Uh, it's got this to control the, the, the little knob to control the strobe speed. You can select music on or off and it's got a little microphone in the front and uh, it's got the motor control speed as well. So let's uh, pop the lid. As with many of these it's, uh, it's made out of aluminium extrusion with uh, end plates sort of holding it all together. There's a little fan in the back as well, presumably for the green laser, because the green lasers do tend to get quite uh, warm, they're quite uh, high power-ish, and they don't like overheating. It's got this nice laser warning symbol and then encourages you to shoot it into people's faces anyway. I see these being used uh, as a garden version for firing into trees, and I have to say I took this one out and fired it into a tree and it was actually quite impressive. That's actually quite a nice effect. I think the Lasers themselves will have such short lasing cavities that the divergence will be quite high, which means that you're not really posing a risk of shooting down aircraft or anything like that, or annoying pilots by pointing it like that. But then again, it's still pointing a laser into the air. So that comes off cleanly. Wobbly plate. There's the microphone in the front. I'm going to make a note of all these connections. Now here is, I'm guessing, this has got the heat sink, so this is going to be the green laser. There's a beam combiner, and there's the red laser with little connectors just shoved onto it. It's actually, all right, okay, it's, looks like it's got three pins, but the connectors just jammed on two. These lasers may be designed to operate with feedback um, to control the output. Um, the beam combiner uh, is a piece of dichroic glass that's in here at an angle. And it's basically at sort of 90 degrees to the, uh, 45 degrees should I say, to the lasers. And the green laser, the, because it's dichroic glass, it's green dichroic, so it'll pass the green, but it'll reflect the red. So in this case, it's been used to combine the two lasers into one path by letting the green beam go straight through, but the red beam bounces off it and then goes through, um, it's reflected at right angles. A uh, very simple way to do it. Um, I'm going to make a note of the connections here. This is a good time actually to uh, announce the winners of the last competition. The winners were, and it was it was chosen at random throughout the all the people that entered. The multipass was won by James Sleeman. Now, James, uh, if you're watching this video, could you get in touch? I've tried contacting you via the YouTube messaging, and it, it's not got through to you. You may have the, you may have that turned off the email facility. Rambozo Clown won the bomb raid. Australian Stig won last Christmas, and Tony Landerkorpi. I probably pronounced that wrong. 
won the Pink Death. The prizes were, uh, multi-pass is going to be a, a RFID pass system with multi-passes, multiple passes. Rambozo Clown was uh, a couple of those sort of plastic toilet roll holder things, that's the bomb aspect of it, plus... Uh, the, if you look up the video Pink Toilet Bomb, plus some other other electronic things, Dangerous Fairy Lights, of course. Australian Stig, uh, last Christmas, uh, he got the Dangerous Fairy Lights and did I send some... Uh, I'm pretty sure I sent some other stuff as well. Not 100% sure. I'm going to have to check that up. And Tony uh, won the Pink Death, which was more LED fairy lights, which were suitably dangerous, and a load of other random pink stuff from China. So, uh, as I say, the only person who's not uh, gotten back in touch so far is James Sleeman. So um, if he contacts me either by email or through YouTube, preferably through YouTube, so I can just double-check it is uh, him who's contacting me, that would be good. Oh, and I need this notepad now, don't I? Because I'm going to actually note what these connections are. So this circuit board has a row of five connectors that look as though they're just pushed over pins. And I'll have to make a note of the polarity as well. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is doing red laser. I'll just put a big R. And the red's at the left hand side. I'll just pull that off, in fact. This is doing the microphone. Microphone, and it's red to the left-hand side. Not sure if that's power or for the fan. Uh, this one's the motor. And this one is the green laser. So that's green laser with the red at the left-hand side. That's the motor, with the red at the right-hand side. And that just leaves that, which I'll just put red there. I'm not 100% sure what that is yet. OK, that's just in case I, I forget what these connectors are. Actually, you know, it'd be quite interesting. Trying this without the filter on it. Actually, I'll do that afterwards, um, and we'll, we'll, take, we'll compare it. So uh, I'll just... Uh, Pull that off and that off. And let's get the back panel off and see what the circuitry is like. Oh, it all comes off as one module. Oh, that is for the fan, that cable. So it didn't really need to come off. Okay, let's uh, undo these. Well, it, actually, it's probably just as well I took it off because I can leave the fan on this uh, side of this. Doesn't the ventilation slots aren't very terribly generous for the fan? It's not a very efficient way of getting the air through. I'm guessing it's mainly for the green laser. Oh, just one chip. So that was the laser outputs. I can see transistors. But are they acting as... No, they're going onto a power plane. And then both of them are being driven by these resistors, which go to a common point, which then goes through the microphone enabling. Ah, uh, right, OK, I reckon that the current limiting to resistors, there's no active current limiting as such, it's just these resistors, and there's two pairs of resistors. The ones for the red laser are 82 ohm, two of them in parallel, so that's equivalent of 41 ohm. And the one for the green is two 22 ohms, so that's about 11 ohms in series with the green laser. Which is reasonable enough, because um, the... Power supply is supposedly a regulated 5 volt one. I'm not sure how well regulated it is. There's a chip which I'm guessing is mainly to do with the strobing and the audio processing. And it is a 74HC04D, which I think is a hex inverter. Could be wrong. I'd have to check that up. I'll double check that. And that's fundamentally it. 
really not much to it at all. No polarity protection, but I, again, it's just a, a 5 volt supply, it's dedicated power supply for it, so I guess they probably don't think they need that, and it's reasonable enough. Okay, so uh, let's see what I can do with this, because I quite fancy making it brighter. I don't like the red, so um, I'm thinking that I'm going to experimentally modify this. I might even get rid of the rotating effect. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and see if I can just make it a, a lesser number of stars, but much brighter. OK, uh, I'll be back shortly. OK, so let's start moving bits. I've locked the camera exposure off so we can see how it affects it. Uh, at the moment, uh, it really helped when I aligned the red laser properly, because before it just wasn't aligned right, and it was really dim. And now I'm pointing that at the wall, and the red has just increased greatly in intensity. But uh, we can do better than that. Uh, right now, I'm going to flip the front plate off. The screws in the front plate are kind of uh, stripped slightly. And I'm going to unplug the microphone, which is this connector, and just whip the front plate off completely. And we'll see how that affects the output. Uh, the distortion effect, incidentally, is caused by the motor rotating a piece of, sort of holographic material. So that's a, it's got the, there's a rotating bit in front of the motor, and then it goes through another bit of the material on the front cover. But if I take the front cover off, massive increase in brightness, but um, it's just rotating patterns. Much less dots than if I had the other piece of material in front of it, which does, to be fair, scatter more dots. Now, what if I just get rid of the red laser and I just fire the green straight through? Because the green is by far the best effect, particularly if I'm going to be shining it into trees. So let's uh, unplug the red laser, which is this one. And I'm going to remove the red laser module completely. And then I'll remove the beam combiner so that the green is just going straight through. I don't know if it will make much difference. So that's the red laser module removed. And now I'm going to remove the beam combiner. This is I've just put my finger in front of the laser, that's why it's suddenly gone off. Has that made a difference again? I think it has, actually. I'm kind of like uh, thinking maybe I do want the front cover adding that extra dimension. Yeah, it does, certainly. It, it scatters the beam about a lot more. But I'm not 100% sure. It certainly it's. I'm just going to project this. Oh, that is so bright. Yeah, you know what? I like this in its own, just rotating, so I might actually just get rid of the front panel. Um, yeah, that's that's quite an interesting effect. It's definitely increased the output greatly now. And a thing I noticed about these is they, uh, they say you shouldn't run them for X length of time without turning them off. Really, they're just covering themselves the fact that the green lasers, are they get quite hot because they're not super mega efficient. Uh, the way the green lasers work, the DPSS lasers, diode pump solid state is that what that means, and you've basically got an infrared laser stimulating a crystal to laser at a particular wavelength, and it's below the green wavelength uh, by about ha half the green wavelength, so then it goes through a frequency doubler crystal, and that boosts it up to the actual uh, green visual, visible output. Um, it's one of the more complex lasers, but it's so mass-produced now that they're just readily available. That's, I, I see that, you know, they do the purple lasers now, which I think are just a solid-state laser without any of that fancy circuitry or, or crystals in it to do that frequency doubling. But um, the, uh, I think because the purple ones were designed from the scratch-up for, like, laser assemblies in um, optical storage devices that they had the motivation to actually design like that, whereas with the green, because the first green were just designed around this multiple, the sort of infrared and 
DPSS technology. Um, they've just kept it that way just because the factory is all set up to make these. But yeah, this is a, it's an interesting little laser and it's certainly quite hackable in a sense. You can definitely increase the output with uh, and uh, it gives you the option whether you have this bit in the front or, or you know, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe the red was a good idea. Although, if I'm shining this into trees, green is the brightest and also the red would just get lost in any foliage. So I think I'll stick with the green. Now let's take the power supply to bits. Oh, that's a nice effect. I didn't actually know it did that before. That's quite a nice kaleidoscopic effect just uh, on the table itself. So that's it, completely and utterly stripped out. Here's the assembly. It, it's basically it's a, a, a motor and a gearing system, and then it rotates this little bit of the dichroic filter, the sort of um, diffraction uh, material on the end of it, uh, to create that sort of effect. And there's a matching bit just physically glued onto the cover here. So this, this is looking a lot nicer now. I've removed most of that stuff. In a sense, I could, if I wanted just static dots, I could remove this assembly and I could just have the laser focused directly onto the this in the front, which would then just give a fixed array of dots. I'm not, I quite like the movement though. It's quite an interesting effect. So I may actually keep that. Um, so let's uh, take a look inside the power supply. Oh, where's the... This is the bit of a... Uh, do I have a bit of paper here to actually show you this? This is the um, dichroic glass uh, beam splitter. And uh, I, I'm not going to be able to show you this. It's just not going to show up too well. As you can see, uh, when you look from the front, it looks green. But if I sh reflect light off it, if I can reflect light off it, there's a light. Oh, yes, you can see uh, it sort of reflects the red beam. I wouldn't say it's the most efficient. Yeah, there's the... Yeah, that's not working that well, is it? Yeah, it's just swamping the camera out. But that's how, how it works, the sort of the beam combiner. And it really is, it's just really just jammed in an angle into this piece of plastic. Bizarre, these, you know, beam combiners, lasers, it all used to be really incredibly science lab stuff, and now you get it in consumer gadgets rammed into bits of plastic. Anyway, the power supply, because I'm digressing here. The power supply says 5 volt, 1 amp. I'm expecting the usual that we're all kind of used to, the flyback converter. Okay, oh, that's quite good separation. I'm just going to short this capacitor out of my finger. Yep, yeah, that's dead. Well, I might as well get it over with if it was uh, still holding a charge. Quite good separation uh, over five millimeters here. And an anti-tracking slot here. Um, full bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, 2.2 microfarad, 400 volt. Uh, it's got the opto isolator. Then just what you'd expect in output. It's got a, a zener diode and resistor for feedback. Super simple. It's got a USB connector position. And the grommet for the cable is the size of the USB connector, so it sits into that slot. So this case is obviously designed to be either USB, or with this grommet, uh, it turns it into just a 5-volt supply, or any other voltage supply. It's got the resistor for the LED, it's got the rectifying diode, it's got the smoothing capacitor. It's just a generic little power supply. Good separation, except you never know what's actually inside the transformer. I can see the feedback winding round on top there, but you just don't know what the separation is inside between the in the main side and the low voltage side, which is, uh, I'm not 100% sure if there's a physical connection between the casing. There may be uh, on the laser. I'm just going to get the meter in. Uh, let's get the meter turned to continuity. And check that out. So, let's go on to the case here. Yeah, you know what? The case is connected to the output of the power supply, so I wonder if there's any potential for people to get a little uh, tingle off the case if, uh, if you know, the, the power supply is in, in any way. I'm just actually looking at the nipped cable there, actually. Yeah, but it's not really posing any major sort of hazard, but yeah, it's down to the quality of the transformer again. A uh, kind of... It's not how it should be, but I'm kind of getting used to this, just trusting my life and little power supplies like this. I'm not sure that's a good thing. But um, 
Yeah, so this is a, they're they're fun to take to bits fundamentally. They're they're quite an enjoyable thing to hack and play about with if you really wanted. If you didn't want the rotating uh, output, you could just put this front plate on and remove this whole motor assembly completely. And likewise, ultimately, you could just, uh, if you want, you could rip the circuit board out and just connect the fan to the five volts and it's no real point really but you know you could and just put a resistor in series with the laser which is what they seem to be doing just running it at a fixed current um but yeah it's you know it's, it's a good toy it's well worth buying just to take to bits i think to be honest and uh it does provide a really interesting visual effect